Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here. Today we are making Le Cordon Bleu chocolate chip cookies. I promise this is one of the best recipes ever. And the trick is, we're using pastry flour. That's something that the French do, that's something they taught us to use. And here's how we make it. We're gonna use two cups of cake flour and we're gonna use one cup of all-purpose flour. Now the reason we're doing this and we're using pastry flour is to reduce the amount of protein. All-purpose flour has a higher level of protein which creates a more dense cookie. Doesn't mean it can't make a great cookie. We've all enjoyed lots of all-purpose flour cookies, but this is better, guaranteed better. And we just saw how it is, it easy it is to make pastry flour. Now you can't really find it at the grocery store. Now take a look there. It's lighter in texture. It's fluffier. It's what we want for baking something that we want to have a, a not dense end result. So here's another way to make it. We're going to take one cup of all-purpose flour, and we're going to remove two tablespoons, and we're going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. You all might have seen that one before, which is, it totally works, but it's not as good as the first option. You definitely want to use the cake flour and the all-purpose flour. At the grocery store, uh, you're not going to find pastry flour. It's pretty tough to find, uh, so now you know how to make it, which is great. You can scale up that recipe, stick it in the cupboard, pull it out for later, no problem. So here's a trivia question. Does anybody know what cookie stands for? What is the definition of cookie? What does it translate to? And I have an answer for you at the, towards the end of the video. So these are the actual ones I use as far as the all-purpose. Make sure you use unbleached. You can see them right there with the all-purpose. You can see it's darker and the cake flour is much lighter. Cake flour has been milled down to a very, very fine grain. That's why you cannot make cake flour at home unless you have all that amazing equipment. So the French and how we were taught in school is they weigh everything. They're on the metric system in the United States. We know we're all on a different system. So they weigh everything. I'm gonna have all the ingredients measured out for both recipes. You can go metric or, you know, if you want a cup, half cup, see right there, three fourths of a cup. So we got it both ways here today. So we're starting with brown sugar. Brown sugar is probably one of the greater ingredients. If you haven't been using brown sugar before, wow, are you gonna be amazed how much better it is to add the brown sugar. Incredible. So we got our equal, pound, um, equal amounts on the sugar. And now we have three eggs, but we're not using all three of them. We're gonna use two eggs and one yolk. That yolk is gonna create that little bit of chewiness that we love in the cookie in the centers. And that's the magic. And part of it removing some of the egg white helps along with that development. So very cool. Six ounces of butter, one and a half sticks, one full stick is four ounces, which is cool to know. And we're gonna keep the wrappers because we're gonna use them to grease our cookie sheet. So weighing out our flour here. We've sifted this now twice which is important. We really want everything to come together and we don't want the little spotty parts of the cake flour versed to all purpose. We're using 10 ounces here, which converts to two and a quarter cups of flour. There will be a link below. We'll have all the recipe measurements and instructions for you too. Please feel free to share that. I'd love to get this recipe out and share it with the world. So that's one teaspoon of kosher salt. And this is real important. This is overlooked at times. You gotta scrape down the sides, make sure that everything is mixed well together. And when you're creaming out your, your butter and your sugar and your eggs there, let it go for a while. You don't just wanna bring it together where it looks okay. Part of that process is allowing the sugar to hydrate. And our, in culinary school, our, our teacher kinda kidded like, go as long until the bowl gets warm. Like that would obviously take forever but she was making the point to let it go for a while. So here's our final sift. We added the baking soda and the salt, so we need to do it again. This is just how we make cookies, gotta do it. So here's my, and I added this. I wanted to see how everything worked. It's really nice, a little nutmeg. I talk about how it's an underutilized ingredient. Please use fresh. I've not tried this with the you know prepared, but I'm sure it works. Just sprinkle a little bit in there. It's just more depth of flavor. For the chocolate, I like using Ghirardelli, just a really good brand. I'm not paid to say that. Now, the bittersweet 60% cacao is pretty cool. That little bitterness is not bitter. Let's just say it like that because we have all the sugar and everything that's going on. So it's balancing out the cookies. It's a really good addition. I highly encourage you to do that. And you'll love it. 20 to 30 minutes. You can go longer. You can even cook. You can make them tomorrow. No problem. But the gluten and, and the flour is going to relax. It's going to create a less dense cookie once again and it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to scoop this out and shape them. And we're gonna grab a little bowl of water, an ice cream scooper, and that little bowl of water is gonna allow us to help the cookie dough not stick to our hands. So that happens when we're sitting there shaping them. I like making them into a ball, so they're all even size. And as the cookies 
bake, they are going to flatten out. So we're putting six on this one. I think this is 18 by 13 cookie sheet. And then we're going to add a few extra chocolate chips. This is something I like to do. Oh, please subscribe. I'd love for you all to stick around and see all this cool stuff we're going to do in the future. And hit the bell so you know when we post new content. So adding a few little extra ones in there is pretty nice. It just helps with presentation. And who doesn't want more chocolate chips? So that's a winner, winner. 350, definitely 350. It takes about 14 minutes. After about 11, 12, go take a look. Here's the answer to our trivia quiz. It equals little cakes. So pretty cool. It's nice to know. Cookie equals little cakes. Thank you, the French. So this is after about 11 minutes. You can see that the edges are starting to get crispy. It's like airy sugar goodness, and that's what they're going to look like when they're done. And when you pull them out, right in the middle, just a little light taparoni, you can see the color is going to let you know that it's, it's set up. And then, if you like, I like doing this sometimes. If you, you know, it can help with the presentation, plus it's still hot and they'll melt and all that. It's just amazing, y'all. If this is such a good recipe, please share it with everybody. Come join us on social media. I'll have links below for you and the recipe card below. Y'all have the best. Here's some of our other goodies here. Please stick around, and I hope you guys have the best. Take care. It's just...